Okay, so this is the tutorial for Lab 7, Garbology. Um, what is Garbology? Well, Garbology is the actual application of archaeological techniques to understand our modern society. In fact, it is the ethno-archaeology of contemporary Americans this, through the lens of our trash, which is an incredibly useful and informative lens to view what we actually do. It was pioneered by Professor Bill Rathy of the University of Arizona. Unfortunately, he passed away in uh, 2012. But his legacy continues, and there is ongoing garbology projects all around the country. And what he did was to simply take the techniques that archaeologists use to study ancient societies and turn them on ourselves by looking at our garbage. And he studied patterns of refuse disposal in Tucson, where the University of Arizona is, and particularly across different ethnic neighborhoods, comparing the older part of town, which was the Mexican-American uh, Barrio Viejo, sort of in central Tucson. Then he looked at the uh, sort of early Anglo neighborhoods up through, let's say, Victorian time periods. And obviously, it's modern people living in these neighborhoods. Um, but these are older families, uh, native Tucsonians, let's say, and compared those with the more recent suburbs from the 60s forward, which are largely populated by uh, recent uh, transplants to Tucson, and he noticed really incredible differences between these neighborhoods. So what he did was go to the different landfills, and the waste management folks keep really good records uh, of where the trash trucks have been, and which neighborhoods they went to, and what parts of the dump did they bring the trash to. And they do this because, you know, they need it sometimes in police investigations, and sometimes people lose wedding rings, and, you know, you can go back and sometimes find evidence and find... Uh, things like lost wedding rings if you really want to sort through the trash. But all of this means that archaeologists can have really great records of where the trash came from and where it went. And then they can go and take one of these giant big drills and drill holes right down through different sections of the trash pits, I mean the landfills, and then sort through the refuse and sort it into different classes of refuse, food-related items, packaging, um, written material, metal items, etc. And you can look at different patterns in that refuse to understand different disposal activities from the different neighborhoods. And what they found was that people who lived in, especially the older Mexican American uh, neighborhood, the Barrio Viejo, uh, had a lot less like plastic packaging in their trash, a lot less food waste, because food was actually. Um, bought from places that uh, didn't wrap them in plastic and the attitudes about food and food waste were different in the different ethnic neighborhoods. And in the suburbs there was a lot of plastic packaging, right? And a lot of like like throwaway meals and that kind of stuff. A lot of uh, you know fast food wrappers and all of those kinds of things. And in fact the first garbology results influenced early sustainability studies, right? This is the first data about how people threw away and consumed material in modern America. It also, in archaeological uh, circles, led to a new understanding of the life history of garbage. And through garbology and the work of other archaeologists, we have worked to dispel this, this incipient, uh, uh, insipid sorry, uh, understanding that has followed archaeology for years and years and years, which is that Pompeii premise we talked about before. The uh, untrue idea that artifacts are found where they were last used or discarded. We know that is almost always not the case, right? Instead, we have built this more nuanced understanding of the context of disposal, of refuse disposal. And we have this sort of three-tiered uh, system of understanding the types of refuse. The first one is what we call de facto refuse. It's a Latin word that basically means as you see it. And refuse uh, that is left directly where it was made or last used is de facto in the place where it was last used. So Pompeii, all the stuff preserved where, where it was when Vesuvius explodes, exploded, all of that is de facto. In uh, uh, other contexts, like litter that's just thrown down, like used and thrown down on the sidewalk, can be considered de facto. If a house or a, a, a room is abandoned and they just left the furniture and trash on the ground, that's de facto. 
And then activity areas, like you know, the example I used in the lab is making dinner, your uh, peels that you uh, leave behind are um, you know, right by the, the cutting board are de facto until you clean them up. Primary refuse is refuse that has been cleaned up from its de facto location, but only put into kind of a temporary place that it's eventually gonna be removed from yet again. So trash cans in our house, right? That's primary refuse. It's in the vicinity of where it was generated, but it is not exactly where it was used, and eventually it's meant to be cleaned up again. Piles that are swept up into corners, caches of good that are put, you know, like in your cupboard, like uh, all your canned goods, right? Those are in primary storage at the moment. They're going to be removed, used, and then eventually disposed of. Secondary contexts are permanent disposal locations. So when we take our trash cans out and they go into the bin by the street and then into the trash truck into the landfill. The landfill is the secondary final resting place of it. And there may be multiple primary locations before you get to that secondary disposal location of a trash pit or a midden, right? And these three stages form what we call the use life, the refuse use life trajectory, right? Often refuse goes through all three of the stages before we archaeologists find it. So there's some use happening, some behavior. Um, the initial disposal could be de facto. It's then cleaned up, put into primary, then from primary put into its final secondary, and then we go dig up the trash pit or the midden, and we found all of this stuff in secondary context. Sometimes we find it earlier. We're digging a house, and people were using stuff. They were disposing it de facto, then cleaning up and putting it into the kitchen trash and they left one day and never came back and we find the kitchen trash can full, right? That's primary context. Sometimes we find it de facto, right next to the cutting board, they left and never cleaned that up, okay? Often, it, uh, uh, refuse, especially in the past, would be reused or recycled, sometimes multiple times. So they'll be using something, they'll dispose of it de facto. Let's say it's animal bones after butchering, they'll put it down next to where they're butchering the animals. Then they'll come back and then they'll boil the bones and they'll carve the bones and they'll use them and they'll dispose of them again. And then maybe they'll be de facto, then primary, and then maybe secondary again. So things that get reused and recycled throw us for a little bit of a loop because they've been through multiple iterations of use life. And that makes it a little bit difficult, but what we need to do is to find our way back from whatever context we discover the refuse in, whether that's secondary, primary, de facto, back to the actual behavior, the use, what the stuff was actually used from. That's our goal as archeologists. And you're gonna try and do that in your lab for this week. And I'm gonna ask you to do garbology in and around your house. You're gonna to need to identify two different refuse disposal locations in or near your home. I highly suggest you try and find um, one of like let's say primary and one of secondary or one of de facto and one of primary just two different kinds contexts of refuse disposal so you get different understandings right of of disposal behavior and you're going to need to go back at least twice but hopefully multiple times hopefully over multiple days and record the kinds and counts of different types of trash that are found in those two different locations so here we have a, you know example from on campus. These are just our regular bins on campus. And here's an area behind the Starbucks where they temporarily put items. This is de facto kind of, or maybe even actually primary storage, both of them, uh, but different contexts completely. And you go back at different times and you record the stuff that's in there. Now you're gonna use this uh, classification of trash. Food related or F for shorthand, beverage related or B, consumables or C, educational related items or E, packaging or P, M for media, and O for others. And you're going to count the different types of refuse that fall under each of these categories at each of your refuse locations at each of the times you go to observe them. So here's an example. Here's the one trash pit or trash can. And at one time it has one F item and nothing else. Come back at a different time, it has 1B, 2B, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 Fs, right, that we can see. Go back another time and it's going to be different again. 
and you may have no uh, items from media, for example, that's okay. You just write a zero in your notes for those items. So what you're going to do is to record those uh, data. You're going to put them into a spreadsheet that you copy over, and I'm going to show you how that works in a minute, and you're going to analyze them using bar plots, and I'll show you how to do that in a minute. Then you're going to compare the two areas, and you're going to compare them uh, patterns over time, and try and understand the context of the refuse and what your data tells you about refuse disposal behavior and activity that actually happened at your two locations. This is an example, right, of cleaning up on campus. Once you show up uh, before the can is empty, you get one count. You show up after our wonderful janitorial staff have emptied it, you're going to get a different count. Where does the trash go? Who removes it? That's a clue, right? If the counts reduce, then somebody's cleaning up its primary going now into secondary context. If you show up and there's a lot more, then something really happened, right? Uh, for example, on this one, before the lunch rush, after the lunch rush, right? It's a, it's a big difference in behavior um, related to the disposal. So uh, you have the, uh, the lab handout available, and you'll just read through it. Uh, it has the classes and all of that kind of stuff written into it. You need to choose your locations carefully. You need to make some hypotheses about what you're going to see over time. Then you need to make your observations. You can record them. There's some forms you know, that you can use or you can do it on your own notes. And then you click this for the Google Sheets. And I've pre-populated them with just dummy data so you can see what the plots might look like. But you'll want to clear out these data and uh, enter it in. So location one, you can write the name of it. It can be like kitchen trash or whatever here and time you can you can even put in the time like Tuesday 5 p.m. or something like that and then you put your counts one food item one beverage item five consumables no education we live in post pandemic time so about 20 Amazon boxes uh, no media no other and you can see how that uh, updates in the plot and then you can go back another time so you can go back on Wednesday at 5 p.m. And you can have now two food items, two uh, of those, six of these, one of those, 40 Amazon boxes, one media, one other, right? And you'll do this again and again, right? I give you five. You can expand this and update the plot if you want. And if you change the labels, you'll see how they change on the plot. And you have the colors related to the different types of refuse. And then you have two plots, one for each location. And when you're done, you can click over there and you can download the PNG image as well. And use those when you do your write-up. So quickly, I'm just going to undo everything that I did so that when you go to see this, you'll see it just the way I left it initially. But when I ask you to do the write-up, I'm going to first ask you to describe your two locations, tell us when you went, why you chose the locations and what your hypotheses about the trends are going to be. Then you're going to use your data plots to help you summarize the trends for each location and compare them to each other. And then finally, you're going to reflect on the exercise and tell us what you learned about refuse disposal in your places and what activities you think were happening there. Okay, hopefully that's all making sense.